Thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Sorreo, and joining us as he does every month is our mayor, Eric Alegria. Mayor, thank you for being here today. Pleasure to be with you, Maria. Always a pleasure. And we are here today in Eastview Park. We're on location. And this is actually very close to all of the beautification that's going on right up the street on Western Avenue. So yes. let's start our show there today talking about that because I know the city of RPV has really put in so much time and funds when it comes to the other side of the hill over here and and all the work that they're doing tell us about that no thank you maria and it's great to be in eastview and remind our residents how much we care about the east side of our city as well and as you mentioned um western uh the western corridor is an important aspect of our city um for decades our communities looked for ways to beautify improve it and i'm happy to say that you know more formal work although it's been discussed in the past is mm -hmm. underway yes and and in the form of um some significant improvements around beautifications that's happening now. There's cleaning, cleaning and de-weeding of planters and medians and parkways and sidewalks. I've already noticed the repainting of the uh, bus benches has been completed, curb paint, replacing um, some of the waste receptacles, repairing damaged concrete planters, mm -hmm. uh, and then planting some new flowers, which I think which will be a nice, nice little touch in the medians. You see a lot of, uh, today, We I, there's still some open um, planters, but flowers mm -hmm. are gonna be in there shortly. And then within weeks, we also expect uh, those walls mm -hmm. along uh, Western, especially uh, if you look from Avenue Apprenda all the way up to where we are at around yes. Westmont, mm -hmm. uh, there's some walls and they're not contiguous currently. And the plan is to work with those homeowners who own those, those walls and, and make sure that we put together a paint along that wall, make it contiguous. So just all the little things, right. they go into the broader uh, beautification effort and that's certainly underway. And there's so many thriving businesses on Western Avenue. Can you speak to the economic growth to this side of the hill in RPV? Oh, it's so many important businesses to our city. I know that I and my family contribute quite well to Trader Joe's, for instance. <laughs> Marshalls. Uh, Marshalls, <laughs> yes. uh, Starlight uh, Theaters, and, and other terrace businesses, uh, and other businesses, frankly, in the mini strip malls and right. along Western. Um, and as somebody who lives and has lived on the east side of the city, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you that um, our residents make great use of the businesses and, and uh, utilize businesses on Western uh, often, right. uh, along with the, the residents from across the uh, across the street as well. Yes. So it's an important aspect of our community. I know that traffic flow is always a concern as well. What are the biggest challenges in this area? For anyone who commutes through Western, which yes. I do, you know, it, it can be a challenge. I, I would say it's certainly improved um, over the decades, mm -hmm. uh, but there's still opportunity to do a tra traffic synchronization effort, and that's one of the things that we're underway and doing currently. Okay. Uh, we believe that's a project that's gonna take some time because it requires a heavy amount of coordination with the city of LA as well as California DOT. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of, uh, some of that work's already begun. For instance, right uh, adjacent to where we are currently, the, uh, the right-hand uh, turn lane on Westmont was recently um, instituted. And so uh, just one example and several more to come uh, around tra traffic synchronization. The goal ultimately is to ensure that people can get home uh, safely and efficiently. Yes, very true. It's interesting when you talk about beautification, how often in any city does things like that have to be up the upkeep and replaced and things like that? How often does that happen? Uh, you know, unfortunately, not as often as it should. <laughs> yes, I guess so. I think is really the answer, especially in most cities. <laughs> right. But this is RPV. We're very proud mm -hmm. of the way uh, we appear to our residents and yes. to our visitors. And uh, Hawthorne, of course, is another recent example of where we did significant median work. Yes. And, and now West, we're targeting Western. We need to beautify Western. Uh, and But in this case, we needed to do it in close partnership with the uh, city of L.A. and mm -hmm. California Department of Transportation. I noticed there was a lot of um, also benches that w were being redone. And really, the work is really extensive as you go up and down Western Avenue. So it's really nice to see. It's nice to see, and it's, it's, it's a long time coming. Right. So, I'm glad that we're able to show some progress to our residents, mm -hmm. and I want to let them know that there's more to come. Very good. As we move on, uh, we recently had the one-year anniversary with the city of Sakura, Japan. It was uh, our sister city anniversary, and it was really such an amazing evening and a very special unveiling. Tell us about that. Uh, it was a special evening, uh, August 4th. I know that RPV TV was there and is doing a show to sort of summarize yes. some of the highlights. Mm -hmm. 
wonderful event. Um, it commemorated our first anniversary of our relationship as a sister city with the city of Sakura City, Japan. Yes. I was so impressed with our staff and our ability and RPV TV's ability to do a sort of bi-directional yes. <laughs> uh, real-time exchange between our two cities. It was the evening for us, the morning for them. Right. And we exchanged videos. There were, uh, were some other uh, cultural exchanges, such as um, there was a koto played, a traditional Japanese 13-string instrument. Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't had the pleasure of hearing that instrument for several years. It was so beautiful. It was, it was gorgeous, and it was a real pleasure to hear. But it just an overall a great event. Uh, nice to hear from their residents, our residents. Yes. Um, and I was even proud just to plug my my son. Yes, that, he was uh, great. Maria, you interviewed him. I and, did. And uh, he was more than willing to do a little Rochambeau with you. And you know what was so fun about that is they did have a video with uh, the the kids in Japan and in their school, and it was so it, it was just so fun to see how their children and really the children here are very much the same. It is. It is my my kids who observed it, and now I'm so for, so pleased that RPV TV covered it because I think all the the residents will have a chance to see they will to the way watch. it was memorialized, and and they'll notice uh, those vast similarities between a day in the life that's right of our children here and a day in the life of the children there. But I did notice some differences too. There were a big difference, and one of them had to do with cleaning. Yes. <laughs> I was quick to point that out to my own children. Yes. And uh, so I think there's an opportunity for uh, for us on our side of the ocean to uh, to maybe reinforce that message with our generation. A bit. Yes, I think that was actually a very good observation for sure. <laughs> I think we all noticed that. Well, they teach them how to clean in school. That is interesting. I was, I was very impressed. Very impressive for sure. And then you did um, a special unveiling uh, ribbon cutting, and that was for the sign. Tell us about that. Oh, that was that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, we, we got to unveil the sign on the City Hall property yes. that speaks to the mileage, 5,000 plus miles right. from here to Sakura City. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun to uh, commemorate that special day. That's right. And so if you haven't seen the sign, you have to come out to City Hall because it's quite impressive. And it's just, it, it's so fun to have that sister city relationship and just to be learning so much about the two cultures. Absolutely. A lot of fun. Okay. Uh, turning to a more serious uh, uh, note of business, and that's the wildfire monitoring cameras. And I was reading up a little bit about them. Um, give us a, kind of a, an idea, because I know they go in open space, which we have so much of, and they can really help with, um, you know, the, the wildfires and being able to see them, obviously, before maybe other people would see them. So tell us about that. Uh, I want to give a little bit of an acknowledgement to Councilman Crookshank, who's, who's uh, been a, an advocate for um, these cameras okay. and um, we've known for a couple of years that other areas uh, especially along like Pacific Palisades Malibu so other similar areas with topography similar to ours high fire severity zones mm -hmm. have instituted cameras like this in the past and so our council has got very interested in how could we make good use of them uh, and then in the last council meeting as you acknowledged Maria there was great discussion on this yes and uh, I was quite impressed by the capability of these cameras. And so um, just to highlight a couple of things, their mm -hmm. distance is quite amazing. It's 60 to about 120 miles. Um, it can pick up and detect smoke uh, and alert you know, the authorities and first responders so as to give us a leg up on our response to any sort of fire event. Um, so really impressive that this technology is um, going to make us a little bit safer potentially in our city. So there, there have been privacy concerns, Okay. Uh, but we were able to ask some good questions of staff mm -hmm. and the vendor and um, what's really impressive about this technology also is that it has a way of pixeling out, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, homes and um, still picking up fires. So if there's a home fire, for instance, although the uh, the visual aspects of the camera won't pick up the house itself. It can't see people within that area. I see. It can still detect whether there's smoke and there's a fire. So not only is it potentially a benefit, of course, to our large, vast open spaces, mm -hmm. it's also a benefit uh, to homes uh, that are being covered by the cameras as well. Do we know yet how many it would take, and, or do we have logistics? Not we don't. Yet. So council okay. uh, was very impressed and, and actually didn't want to just do this in a vacuum. We wanted to work with the other three peninsula cities as well, just to make sure we have a coordinated plan to cover the entire peninsula, mm -hmm. especially those you know, more vulnerable spaces. And so that's the direction we provided the staff. It's going to return to council at a future date. And um, 
and hopefully we'll move forward and, and get some of these cameras um, uh, put in place. And I think, as mentioned, there are other cities nearby th that have had great success using them, yes? Yes, uh, certainly, as I mentioned, in sort of that Malibu Pacific right. Palisades area. And kind of, but uh, it's been interesting that we, we don't have cameras here and, yeah. and haven't had them locally. So well, good opportunity to cu upgrade our, yes. our way of doing things. And, and speaking of upgrades, I know that Cox Communications uh, was at the city council meeting and some people virtually talking a lot about uh, the concerns that really impact the residents. What was Cox's response to some of these concerns? I know that bandwidth is a big thing, not having enough internet, things like that. Give us a little overview uh, on that. Well, one, it's just a, it's a good dialogue. So this is the second year we've invited Cox, we've invited other utilities at different times to give us an update, give us an opportunity and our residents an opportunity to express concerns. And uh, fortunately, we did get a lot of feedback, mm -hmm. um, constructive and positive. Right. And uh, you know, some of the issues we hear about often is customer service, uh, the speed and reliability of the system, um, the cost to the customer, right. and, and other and other matters as well. Um, as those resident concerns came in, we were asking Cox uh, to coordinate with our staff and make sure that all those residents were being responded to individually. Right. But we also identified some ways to make sure we can provide collectively information to our residents to help them out in the future. And so, for instance, uh, we agreed that we wanted to utilize our website once again. Good. Well, that's a great website. And <laughs> include some things there uh, in terms of Cox customer service information, who to contact, where to go, uh, but also uh, include information on their upgrade schedule. So they. Have been so as it relates to speed and reliability, mm -hmm. uh, it's a complicated issue that requires usually a case by case analysis. However, uh, that those upgrades and that upgrade plan should you know spell improvements for our residents, and we ask them to include that information and be very transparent. And we expect to have that on our website as well, so people can hopefully see when they can anticipate seeing upgrades to uh, to the infrastructure in their area. You know, and I learned something because I think when we hear the word upgrade, we think, oh, they just want to charge us more money. They just want us to pay more money. But they really explained that the technology has been upgraded as well, which could in turn help with the internet and the, the bandwidth access, all of that. So really they did a great job just explaining everything. Yes, I, I appreciated their professionalism. Yeah. I appreciated that they came out with uh, several representatives. They did. There's a real sincere interest in solving our problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have an appreciation for the complexity of these problems. And um, we do want to encourage our residents to contact them. I know we've got some information here on who they can connect with. Yes. Uh, Dave Simpson is their government, uh, government affairs okay. uh, manager. And uh, I know that he can be contacted. Uh, at dave.simpson2, okay. dave.simpson2 at cox.com. And then, of course, there's a Cox Sol a solution store mm -hmm. in the Peninsula Shopping Center as well uh, at 423 Silver Spur Road within Rolling Hills Estates. And so there's various ways for people to get their concerns addressed and their uh, questions answered. And I think that's so important. And I know, as you mentioned, that the, uh, the staff is working closely with Cox on an ongoing basis to really keep up on all of these things, too, which is great. We expect the highest level of service for our residents. Very good. I think that that's, uh, that's something that everybody wants to hear, that's for <laughs> sure. That's for sure. And then recently we had the Sheriff's Department quarterly report came out. And during the meeting, Captain Powers of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department presented its department activity in RPV. What added value do we receive from the quarterly report? Well, a great value. Um, and this is information that our council is privy to, particularly the Mayor Pro Tem and I. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just felt uh, passionate that we wanted to get this information out to our residents. Uh, there is a you know regional uh, peninsula regional safety public safety forum, uh, but this is just one other way of getting information out to our residents. And and of course, Ca uh, Captain Powers has been gracious to uh, and willing to provide those updates, which I think provides valuable information on our crime stats and trends and and ways in which um, we are working to continue to improve public safety. I know that his findings were that there was an uptick in vehicle thefts. What can you tell us more on that subject? It's not a new trend, but I think it's right. an important. It's a message just worth uh, reinforcing. Yes. Which is uh, lock your car. Yes, lock Make your car. Make sure cars. that the valuables aren't visible and so forth, because it, in several of the cases when it came to theft from cars, right. Unfortunately, um, you know, visibility was an issue, or 
uh, cars were, were unlocked. The other, the other trend that he spoke to was, um, you know, really seemed to be an uptick. They do these heat maps. So in the meeting, yeah. they provided a heat map of where these crimes took place. And you can see the trend itself. And so if you look close to trailheads and trailways, oftentimes you're going to see a little bit more of an uptick in um, vehicle-related theft. It, it, so. Which is interesting because I think that people just sort of forget sometimes and they're kind of busy getting in and out of the car and then they just don't lock the car and lo and behold, people come along well, and they try to unlock the doors and that's it. We can all be guilty of that. So it's Absolutely. just all stay dil diligent at all times. Yes, yeah. that's true. And I, I know that sometimes if there are things visible, people will tend to, they'll break windows and, you know, if they see a laptop sitting on the the seat, they'll, they'll break in. So Correct. it's really important to kind of reinforce that, as you said in the beginning, so that that doesn't happen. It is. Uh, also, the Preserve Municipal Code updates in response to the activity in the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve and other city-owned open space areas, um, including parks and beaches, staff recommended five amendments to be um, to chapters, I'm sorry, 12, 16 streets, parks, and rec facilities of Rancho Palos Verdes Municipal Code to improve the city's ability to enforce certain regulations and in some cases to strengthen and clarify existing regulations. That's a lot. So tell us all about that. I think you summarized it quite well, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Well, you so, need to break it down and explain you know, this is, this is a This is an opportunity for our city to do, I, I would say, some level of cleanup. I, I can't recall the last time we did a cleanup on this code, but it, it can be sometimes several years and you mm -hmm. sort of look back and you realize there's an opportunity. Right to uh, make sure that we're still protecting the quality of life for our residents and balancing different issues. Like, for instance, there was a good discussion in the meeting on e-bikes, you know, sort right. of a newer yes. newer technology. Mm -hmm. um, how do we deal with it? Um, how do we manage it and balance uh, the safety and access and all of those things? And so that that's one example. Uh, but also we wanted to strengthen uh, some of our code as it relates to being able to recover costs. So we do have times, and we had recently some damage to our gates, for instance. Right. Uh, but we also have damage in other ways to the preserve, and we want to have the strength in our ordinance to be able to um, recover those costs in mm -hmm. those, those instances. And so uh, those are just a couple of examples of things that came out of it. Uh, but it's just part of this ongoing effort to make sure we've got the, the right level of ordinance uh, to, to make sure we're protecting quality of life, but letting people still enjoy uh, in this case, the preserve. And I know that, as you mentioned about the e-bikes, this is something that you always have staff look into things like this, so you have a broad uh, spectrum of information, so you know what to do next, which is good. Yes, and and it's an, it's also an opportunity to evaluate what other cities are doing, right. what they're doing in other open spaces, other preserves. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was rather interesting. It was. Yeah, rather yeah. interesting, yeah. Very true. And then we just want to remind everybody that there are so many great classes in the Rec and Parks Department, and fall is coming. So tell us about some of these yes, classes. Yes, a chance to stay in shape. Yeah. You know, those of you who've uh, you know, gotten in shape post post uh you know, some of the initial hit of the COVID it's true. and um, enjoyed your summer. Hopefully there are classes coming up. We mm -hmm. like to continue to offer things to our residents and the community. Um, Zen balance, chair yoga. That's what I yes. have tried. A lacrosse, Spanish, uh, dance classes, karate, basketball, soccer. It's just, there's no shortage of activities for our residents in the community. I'd love to just give a quick plug to say stay tuned for more information because we expect to have ice skating uh, close to the sea as we get close to the end of the year. So okay. stay tuned. More to come. Stay tuned. We're going to hear more on that one. That's for sure. Yeah. And I know the classes are really for all ages, different ages for different um, things, which is really yeah, nice. That's the intention, to have uh, programs that are available to all our residents uh, from the youth all the way to our seniors. You keep the Rec and Parks Department very busy between these beautiful we, parks and all of the classes. That's the expectation, <laughs> and they love doing it. They do. They're really great at it. And lastly, before we go, we have to talk about bubbles, which is... What would the conversation be without bubbles? We have Maria? to talk about bubbles. <laughs> bubbles a whale, of course, very famous from Marine Land days. And she sits um, on our city hall site. As of recently, bubbles is going to be... Um, she's going to be put back together. Tell us more about this. Well, we were... This is not a new topic. I it's want to not. give a little shout out and credit to prior councils and mm -hmm. um, Susan Brooks, my friend as well. Yeah. Uh, and others who along the way have said, you know, let's celebrate our history. Bubbles speaks to a uh, multi-generational aspect of our community. That's right. And, uh, you know, since the, a recent council meeting where we brought the issue up and the council reaffirmed the, the plan to put bubbles 
back uh, up in her full glory. Yes. In front of the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Perfect location to put her back. Yes. And, uh, and this is all credit to some of our key residents, John Sanson and, and Suzanne Seymour, a couple of names, as mm -hmm. well as others who are helping pull the effort together. They have a GoFundMe page. Um, I understand that we're starting to get some contributions and there's been great media coverage yes. recently. You've been very uh, busy. Uh, yes, they've kept me very busy talking about <laughs> bubbles, which I love talking about. Yes. Uh, what a great way to celebrate the legacy of Marineland and, um, and to celebrate the residents of Palos Verdes and in the in the form of bubbles so. yes and you're going to be hearing a lot more about bubbles right here on rpv tv because we're going to do a little uh, history on marine land and bubbles and have the gofundme up and you know really people just they love they loved that whole era and i think there's a little piece of that still in the residence which is really nice part part of our heart Part of our heart. That's right. Go Bubbles. <laughs> All right, Mayor, anything else you'd like to add today? No, I think that's that's good for today. Well, and it's been beautiful here out at Eastview Park, so thank you so much for hosting us. Mayor, thank you, of course, for being here. We sure appreciate it. Happy to be here with you, Maria. And we'll see you next month. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time on City Talk.